Hey everyone, I'm back with part two of preparation for the bride awaiting our Lord's return. Um, and I do apologize for having to end that video. I just was feeling the weight of the grieving of the Holy Spirit and um, I needed a few minutes. So, but I'm back and we're continuing um, in Jeremiah chapter 51. If you're stumbling across this video, I would encourage you to watch part one first and then come back and watch this video. So we're going to begin in verse 1 of Jeremiah 51. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will stir up the spirit of a destroyer against Babylon, against the inhabitants of Lebkamai. And I will send to Babylon winnowers, and they shall winnow her. And they shall empty her land when they come against her from every side on the day of trouble. Let not the archer bend his bow, and let him not stand up in his armor. Spare not her young men, devote to destruction all her army. They shall fall down slain in the land of the Chaldeans, and wounded in her streets. For Israel and Judah have not been forsaken by their God, the Lord of hosts. Um... I'm going to keep going. Um, but the land of the Chaldeans is full of guilt against the Holy One of Israel. Flee from the midst of Babylon. E let everyone save his life. Be not cut off in her punishment, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance, the repayment he is rendering her. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand, making all the earth drunken. The nations drank of her wine, therefore the nations went mad. Suddenly Babylon has fallen and been broken. Wail for her. Take balm in her take balm for her pain. Perhaps she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she was not healed. Forsake her and let us go, each to his own country. For her judgment has reached up to heaven and has been lifted up even to the skies. The Lord has brought about our vindication. Come, let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Sharpen the arrows, take up the shields. The Lord has stirred up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, because his purpose concerning Babylon is to destroy it. For that is the vengeance of the Lord the vengeance for his temple. Set up a standard against the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up watchmen. Prepare, for, prepare the ambushes. For the Lord has both planned and done what he spoke concerning the inhabitants of Babylon. O you who dwell by many waters, rich in treasures, your end has come. The thread of your life is cut. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself. Surely I will fill you with men as many as locusts, and they shall raise the shout of victory over you. It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. When he utters his voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens, and he makes the mist rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain, and he brings forth the wind from the storehouses. Every man is stupid and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols. For his images are false, and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of delusion. At the time of their punishment, they shall perish. Not like these is he who is the portion of Jacob, for he is the one who formed all things. And Israel is the tribe of the inherit of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. You are my hammer and weapon of war. With you I will break nations in pieces. With you I will destroy. With you I destroy kingdoms. With you I break in pieces the horse and the rider. 
With you I break in pieces the chariot and the charioter. With you I break in pieces man and woman. With you I break in pieces the old man and the youth. With you I break in pieces the young man and the young woman. With you I break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. With you I break in pieces the farmer and his team. With you I break in pieces governors and commanders. I will repay Babylon and all the inhabitants of Chaldea before your very eyes for all the evil they have done in Zion, declares the Lord. Behold, I am against you, O destroying mountain, declares the Lord, which destroys the whole earth. I will stretch out my hand against you and roll you down from the crags and make you a burnt mountain. No stones shall be taken from you for a corner and no stone for a foundation, but you shall be a perpetual waste, declares the Lord. Um, that is a portion of Jeremiah 51. There's actually much more. Um, as I mentioned in the previous video, a revelation the Lord gave me a few years back was the parallel of um, Jeremiah 50 and 51 to our nation. Um, now, when you study Bible prophecy, um, there's a lot, and many a times it's, it really is just revelation from the Holy Spirit, whatever he's showing you as you're studying. Um, so this is just something he's showing me, and he has repeatedly shown me that, so um, I do... Um, believe that this is speaking of our specific nation um, and what is to come. Uh, now, as we know, things in not only our nation but around the world are continuing to worsen. Um, depending on your perspective of how things are going, and um, we are called as his end time saints and as his bride to be a light in this hour. And um, one of the things that he's also been highlighting for me is something actually very critical for believers right now as this division continues. Um, I shared about this division last year, which um, actually um, I want to say it was January of 2020. Um, he gave me this insight about this literal division. It was happening in the, in the spirit realm, but it was also happening among the people. Um, and my understanding what was that we were going to begin to actually see this. And I do feel like with everything that's been going on, we are seeing a huge visible division among people. Um, and I'll just trust the Holy Spirit to translate that for you, to um, just to keep things um, Uh, focused on on what he's sharing and what we're talking about um, and if I feel that to get into details then I'll do that but at this time I don't so with that said um, Romans 12 is a passage of scripture that um, we need to meditate on right now 
because um, oh, thank you. Um, the love of many is growing colder by the day. And you have likely experienced this for yourself. Um, and that is because, again, we are moving very quickly into this place where, as the Lord is continuing to sift and separate the wheat and the tares, the goats and the sheep. Um, it's going to be more and more obvious if it hasn't already manifested in your life um, in relation to people. And the reason is because he's continuing to prepare us, but we're actually moving, a lot of us, I should say, are moving from preparation to action. And this is all according to where he's had us, but also where we've been in terms of how we've been yielding or not yielding to the Holy Spirit. Um, this is why I shared a lot on Instagram um, because I only recently started uploading videos on YouTube, but I shared much last year about how the lockdown was a time for us to truly take inventory of our life and our heart and surrender pain and allow him to refine us and sanctify us because that was a gift of time for us to prepare for what is coming and what is ahead which is obviously where we are now but also moving forward what is coming and with that said um, you may have been feeling or finding um, not only a bit of shock at how some people are beginning to act, but also maybe the temptations that might be coming. Um, I just feel I just share this, but temptations that might be coming your way um, to prevent you from walking in love in spite of how others are acting towards you and so that's why I feel like he wants to remind us of Romans 12 so we're going to begin in verse 9 and we're going to go through to verse 21 let love be genuine abhor what is evil hold fast to what is good Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, 
but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. <sighs> okay, this is really powerful. He's giving me um, amazing revelation. Even though this, you know, this is in the context of, um, I believe Paul was writing this to the believers as um, part of just understanding who we are and how we are to relate. But this is this is our instruction right now. This is a an earthly instruction, but all the more as we see the day approaching, which we are. Um, if you can meditate on this, if you can read this and meditate on this and seek to live this out right now, you're going to minister to so many people about his love, even your enemies. Um, we need to know how to do all of this. And it does require casting all our cares on him. It requires forgiving those who hurt you. Um, and we all have our stories about what we've been through and the injustice of what we've experienced in our life. But what does he say? Vengeance is his. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. His good. Goodness is a fruit of the Spirit, and we can impart and share the goodness of the Lord when we walk in the Spirit. Let love be genuine. The only way love can be genuine is if it is grounded in the truth truth of Christ and his truth is full of forgiveness which releases us to forgive love does not keep a record of wrong so this is powerful I mean if we can truly understand the liberation of forgiving and loving which really as believers that's our language that's our spiritual language that's our life language is forgiveness and love so he's highlighting this we need to we need to camp here um, now Okay, let's keep going. Um, and then I might look at these scriptures that, uh, it's a note that I had in my Bible that speaks on the time of sorrows, which is the time that we're in right now. Ephesians chapter five. I seem to have forgotten where Ephesians is. Here we are. Okay, Ephesians chapter five. 
Yes, this correlates to what we just read. Um, okay, I'm going to begin in verse 1. And Yeah, I'll begin in verse 1 and then we'll go from there see where where we land. Okay, therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you, as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is, an idol idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not become partners with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Um... So, as you can see, that is definitely a parallel to what we just read. Um, and he was showing me a little bit, he was just giving me a little insight on um, on a lot. I just feel like there's so much that is speaking to our time in these passages um, and it's just amazing to me that I feel like we're we're walking this out literally right now um, okay I think that's it for Ephesians what I want to share I feel right now is some practical instruction because he does have um, practical and specific instructions to his people and I don't have my notebook out here but he'll remind me if there's something I need to 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 share on what I have in there because I'm thinking of I'm trying to remember if I actually wrote anything in this notebook that I have, but I don't know if I do. 
Um, so let's talk about practical instructions. And I'm going to take this just in case I want to write something down. I don't have, oh, so I do have this one. And my pen. Okay. I will begin with saying that um, I think I shared in the previous video when I first um, when the Holy Spirit first instructed me one of the first instructions that I received from the Lord through the Holy Spirit was um, after he asked me to begin studying. Um, actually, these are the first three instructions. To begin studying. Um, to share what he was showing me. Uh, and it was with a very small group of people. Um, and the third instruction he gave me was to begin storing food and water. Now this is back in 2014 and there was really nothing that would call for that in the natural. I couldn't see or understand even why, um, but I knew it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Um, and I come to understand much later uh, as he was sharing more and more and that this was going to be for the times that we're in. And the reason is because um, part of my assignment um, as an end time saint is to provide when the time comes. And many of you may have also had instructions regarding storing food and water. And um, it might sound, and it does sound, and in my case, personally, it has sounded ridiculous to those who don't understand. Now, I think perhaps in recent years, specifically last year, it made sense because we were in a crisis and we still are where people um, went into panic mode in terms of having enough. And This was only the beginning. There is going to be more as the sorrows continue. Um, so I share that to encourage you that whatever practical instructions he's giving you specifically according to what he's asking you to do how he is planning to use you in this time and in the time to come, that you would heed those instructions. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. So a lot of times he will instruct us to do something. I mean, if we are truly yielded to his spirit and we want to do what he's saying, we are in a season now where we can't, and he shared this with me last year, we're in a season now where we can't walk by sight anymore. It's not going to make sense. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, it's not. It doesn't make sense. Um, 
because we are walking by faith. We are walking by the Spirit. And as time continues, we need to really take hold of that. If we are to truly be where he's calling us to be and go where he's calling us to go, we have to do it by faith. We can't rely on, does it make sense? Even does it feel comfortable? All of that is gone. Um, and this is very important that you understand this. If uh, you truly are, you know, surrendered and being called to um, prepare and go higher to where he's wanting to take you. So with that said, though, um, some of us are called to be uh, and to provide safe havens for others, which includes providing um, nourishment, obviously spiritual nourishment, that's our first assignment, but, you know, through the Holy Spirit, whatever he imparts for us to give to others, to encourage them um, as things continue to progressively worsen, but also physically provide. Uh, and I will say this, it might not surprise you because just as our calling is and has always mirrored the desires and the passions he's put in our heart, um, this is all interconnected. So the way he's going to use you to help and minister to others is all connected. Um, for example, I personally, I have always, at least in my adult life, I have always um, had a heart for the homeless. And um, the Lord has used me uh, just in my personal life to minister to the homeless and to provide what little I had, but it's just something that he, he put that, you know, kind of, uh, sensitivity in me and he's going to use me to provide for others, which is amazing. And I'll tell you right now, I'm walking by faith on that. Um, but in the same way, he's going to use you according to whatever he's put in your spirit and in your soul. So 